All right. <laughs> Good evening, Grace Baptist Church, Brother Chris Haddon, Bloomingdale, Georgia. Uh, it's our evening meditation, so to speak. I get that word because I read a lot of Spurgeon, and Spurgeon always talk about evening meditation. And uh, the Bible does say meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them. Amen? Uh, meditate is just simply, you know, give it some real thought. You know what I mean? Muse. Uh, muse. Um, uh, think it through, you know, uh, give some depth to it. And so uh, this evening I want to talk about something that uh, it's, uh, should be very important to a Christian, and that is the importance of worship. Uh, uh, let me tell you something, we live in a world and it's wicked and it's diabolical and it's got all kinds of things going on and everything else. And, but we as Christians, let me tell you something, we shouldn't uh, lose the sight of worship as far as our spiritual life is concerned. Amen? Now, I know we got to work. i got to work. you got to work. you got to traffic in this world. Right? We can, uh, and, and my brother, let me tell you something, that God didn't intend us to be just singularly snatched out of the world uh, uh, and live in communes and everything else. He intended us to be salt uh, sprinkled in this world. Is that right? He intended us to be light in this world. Right? Amen. Uh, he said, I send you, watch this. He said, I send you out as sheep among what? Wolves. Wolves. So he's, he's, he's not, the Lord's not, uh, uh, un, not, not understanding of what we're trafficking in. Is that right? He, uh, he's the one that said the world's going to hate you, right? He said, uh, he said they're going to hate you. They're going to do all kinds of stuff. He said, but in me, you're going to have peace. Is that right? That's what he said. He said, they hated you, they're gonna, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. They hate my message, they're going to hate your message, right? And so, uh, and so I don't, I'm not walking around though with this, uh, this, uh, uh, this complex, looking to be hated and everything else, but I understand what we're, we're dealing with, amen? Uh, Paul talked about being delivered from this present evil world. And so there's a lot of things going on, I mean, news-wise, you know, political, uh, and uh, it's, we don't just put our head in the sand and then say, oh, well, we just, we all about uh, uh, um, our God and everything, and, and just kind of separate ourselves from all that, and then just have no, no, no opinion on it, or, uh, or, or no way to uh, combat it and everything else. But let me tell you, the Bible says the righteous study the answer. Is that right? So we need to be abreast of what God is doing. But having said all that, we uh, uh, always be apprised this right here, as far as a Christian is concerned, as far as worship is an uh, important aspect in a Christian's life. Amen? Amen? Very important aspect in a Christian's life. It's our lifeblood. Really, it is. And I'm going to show you. Uh, lifeblood. It, 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 uh, there's areas in our life it really affects. Uh, and again, worship, uh, worship to a Christian is like water to a fish. Amen. Amen. Sure, it's like water to a fish. Uh, there's a few fish. There's several fish. You know, I mean, catfish, they can go without water for a while. Some dig in the mud and all this kind of stuff. But it's still damp enough. Uh, they're still getting some moisture. But they got to have water. Sure. Amen. They got to have water. I, when my, so we, out there, and we catch fish and everything else. You pick them out, take them out of the water, and you take a picture with them and everything else. But you can only do that for so long, and they have got to be back in that water. I'm talking about just a few minutes. They've got to be back in that water, and you have to revive some of them. Uh, you get the gills working and everything else, right? And so they'll take over. It'll, they'll die. Right now, you're not gonna, you're not going to lose your salvation, but as far as spiritually concerned, if just some a Christian is not worshiping, you know what? It's going to affect him in his life. Amen. Amen. That's why it's important to come to church. Amen. Amen. It's important to come to church. It's not only important to come to church, but it's important when you come to church to worship. Yeah. Uh, I talked to Brother Burris. And I uh, talked to Brother Baker, and he said, both of them said the same thing. These are men, you know, we respect, been in the ministry well, longer than me. And both of them said, you know what, one thing our people lack of these and to be reminded of, he said, and that is worship. Worship. He said, we don't have no problem worrying. No problem worrying. We don't have no problem whining. Right? And so, uh, again, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, worship, worship is not in, uh, 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 see, I wrote down here, worship. Uh, worship is not um, in, in um, well, worship is not enduring. Worship is supposed to be freeing up the spirit. Amen. It's not enduring to the end. Uh, worship is supposed to be something to enjoy. You realize this? Worship is an adjective. It shows actions. It's something where that you're actively involved in. Uh, worship to a Christian is like honey to a bee. No bees like honey. They spend the whole life. They spend the whole life. Man, in fact, everything revolves around the honey. Is that right? Sure, it is. David described the righteous man seeking a renewed right spirit. And, uh, that's going to be in Psalm fifty-one. But start off. If you, I want to show you something about worship, go to Psalm ninety-one. And we're going to be in Psalm fifty-one. But go to Psalm ninety-one. Or do like our president said. You know, the ones that's really familiar with Bible palms. 
<laughs> Saul, Saul, let me tell you, when somebody says, oh, I'm really familiar with the Bible, and they say palms, you can, <laughs> right off the bat, you're like, okay, there's a problem there. Psalm 96, I said 51, Psalm 96, look at it, we'll read all the way down through here. Psalm 96, watch this. It says, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Notice, unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. Watch this. Verse 2, sing unto the Lord, bless his name, show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among the people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all God. You know what this is? This is worship. This is an individual magnifying the Lord. Amen. It's not a, this is not a big laundry list of can you, can I have, can I have, can I have. This is worship. Amen. This is, watch this. He says, uh, verse, uh, 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 verse 5, For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord. Watch this. He's not talking about money. Now, I know a bunch of preachers, they were fighting every Sunday. Give unto the Lord. He's not talking about money. This is worship. Give unto the Lord, all ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory do his name. Amen. That's why it's important. You know what? That's why it's important to come to the song service. Amen. You know what song service is doing? It's preparing you for worship. Amen. Amen. So missing song service, you know what you're doing? You're missing out. Amen. Amen. Uh, you... I doubt that you will glorify God out there as we do here. Honestly. I doubt you sing it like you sing, uh, sing it out there like you sing here. Just to be quite honest, because you know what happened? It's not, it's not readily acceptable out there, is it? No, sir, it ain't. Look at this. They say, give unto the Lord glory, do his name, bring an offering, come into our courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth, the world also. Now, watch this. Somebody's talking about this worship. Now, the, the, Lord, uh, world also should be, uh, the world also should be established. It shall not be moved. He shall judge his people righteous, uh, righteously. Let the heavens rejoice. Watch this now. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar. I'm, well, I'll read, I'm, I'm picturing this. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Uh, you know, you, we go to the beach, right? And you're like hearing the tide, you know, you, the, it comes in, it's, say it's relaxing. We can put it on our phone and, and uh, rain on. But here it is. You go there, but that's the majesty of the Lord. He says, let the field, watch this, look at verse 12. Let the field be joyful and all, uh, all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood, what? Rejoice. Now my stepdad, he was crazy. He was uh, battier than bats. But he did say one time, he said, you know, I was down there, Chris. He said, and the tree just, I remember him telling me this. He said, the tree just rubbed against me and said, it's, everything's going to be all right. And I was like, okay, we got a problem. <laughs> Then I come to my Bible, though, but I, I realize there's a life within the trees that the God, the Lord has established and made. Amen. And we, I, I don't know about, my brother, see, this is some of the stuff that, you know, people muse about and talk about. I, uh, about, uh, uh, have, we, we, I had not seen, uh, uh, I have not seen, uh, ear have not heard the things, uh, enter into the heart of men, the things that God had prepared for them that love it. We don't know, a lot of this stuff is alive, but we're not on the same level where we can kind of commune with it. Amen? Who knows what we'll be able to do though. Amen? Amen. Look at this. Verse 12, let the field be uh, joyful and all there, then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice. Before the Lord, for he cometh, he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Amen? That's worship right there. That, this guy, this guy's Remember, the song, our psalms were to be sung. Amen? Amen. This guy saw my worship. He's not talking, uh, he, uh, again, people come to church, but you know I found out people come to church? People come to church, and you know what? They're not worshiping. You know what they're doing? Worrying. Worrying is not worship. Yeah. Amen. Let me say that again. Worrying is not worship. You don't come here and sit and look at me and mention, uh, what, ha having your, your, uh, your mind just wandering and wor uh, worrying about tomorrow, that is not worshiping. Amen. Amen. That is not going to help you. 
No. Sleeping is not worshiping. Coming in here sleeping. It's not worshiping. I'm sorry, but it's not worshiping. It's not worshiping. You miss it out. Sleeping is not worshiping. I don't know about you, but I, you know, I don't get too many things. I, I don't get like st stuff in my sleep. No, bad dreams, maybe, but I don't get, <laughs> I don't get, I don't get, you know, messages in my sleep and everything else. I, mostly, what I get in my sleep is sleep. Sleeping is not worshiping. Look at this. And again, it's important. It's something to be enjoyed. It's a source, it's, uh, and we know this right here again, the source of power is the precept, the secret of power is prayer, and the supply of power, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your what? Strength. strength, strength, strength. It's something we need to rejoice. God, give us, the Bible says rejoice evermore. Address always, and again I say what? Rejoice. And if Americans don't have nothing to rejoice about, then who's going to re be rejoicing? Amen. Amen. And if we want to rejoice in what we got, God has given us to this point, let me tell you something. You know what? When are you going to rejoice? What? If everything's taken away? Worship. Worship. The importance of worship. David, uh, now come to Psalm, uh, Psalm 50, uh, 51. Psalm 51. David describes this thing. And we know David's a man after own, uh, God's own heart. And we know David uh, was a great psalm, psalmist and wrote psalms and everything else. And was a great singer and everything else. And would soothe, uh, his singing would soothe uh, the demon spirit that was in uh, Saul from time to time. As uh, that spirit, that thing would trouble him. Uh, I used to mess with Brother Baker on Monday morning. He'd be mad about something. I'd go, oh boy, you want me to play something? <laughs> You want me to play something with him? I was working for him, working with him, and uh, something had gone wrong and everything else, and he'd come in there, and he'd be mad. I said, like, you want me to play something? <laughs> I said, like, I can play something, but I can sing something for you. He goes, yeah, he said, he said so you David and I'm Saul? I said, I didn't say that. <laughs> of course, then he would use derogatory, <laughs> derogatory speech. <laughs> But, <laughs> but watch this. What you know is this right here that uh, uh, I looked, uh, looked in concordance, the book of Psalms, and uh, uh, I found out this right here that worship, uh, the uh, Psalms is the worship book, Proverbs is the wisdom book, and you don't find the worship, you don't find the word worship in the book of uh, Proverbs. This book, Psalm is given so it's. Uh, particularly in the Bible so that we would understand what worship is really about and the importance of it. It's 150, uh, 100, 150 chapters. Amen? Amen? About worship. And so, uh, worship, again, it's always uh, uh, using the present tense, past, present, and future. Worship is 365 uh, uh, days, seven days a week, 24-7. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. It's important. Only time, only time, you know what people worship is found in, when they're in disobedience. Yeah. And if you're not worshiping, you're being disobedient. Amen. Amen. Worship. Psalm 51, watch this. Now, I say this right here, and, and David describes some things here in our spiritual application. Uh, but uh, you realize this right here, our, our whole uh, Christian life, it began with getting our worship straight now. Amen. Y'all understand that? Y'all understand that? That's, we got... It began with getting this worship thing. So let me tell you, before our salvation, you know, we were worshiping all kind of stuff. Amen? Amen. See, it began with us getting our worship uh, straight out. Watch what uh, David says. Uh, Psalm 51, verses 1 through 10, he says, uh, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgression. My sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this even thy sight, that thou mayest be justified when thou speakest to be clear when thou judge. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in hidden parts of 
uh, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness. The bones was thou as uh, bones was thou as broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Creating me, here it is, watch this, creating me uh, a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. Amen. See, let me tell you it all started with us getting right with God. Amen. Y'all realize this right here. Let me give you an example. Uh, 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 let me see. Y'all realize the woman at the well, y'all remember the woman at the well? Her problem was, you know what? She worships, she know not what. Amen. You know what happened? Jesus, you know what her worships, you know what she started getting right and worshiping right? When she got right with Jesus Christ. Amen. You know what he said? Why? He said, they that worship God must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. Is that right? The Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8. What was his problem? You know what? He was trying to worship, but you know what? He couldn't get that thing right until they met Philip on the, on the road in Emmaus. Amen. And they start reading the scriptures, right? Who speaks himself? The prophet some other man. Then he preached unto him Jesus. Amen. And then you know what happened? He got his worship right. Amen. Each time I want you to know they're getting saved. Amen. They're getting right and they're getting their worship right. Amen. Y'all know what happened to us? We got saved and we got our worship right. Amen. Paul on the road to Damascus, uh, 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 Damascus Acts chapter 9. Is that right? He's a Jew. He's worshiping. Amen. He's, worse. he's going about to establish his own righteousness, right? He's doing all these things, but what happens? God stops him or in Acts chapter 9. You know what he does? Uh, he says, it's hard for thee to kick against the prick. Who art thou, Lord? I'm Jesus whom thou persecutest, right? Arise. It should be shown thee what he's doing. Next thing you know, he's a believer in Jesus Christ, and you know what happens? He gets his worship right. Amen. Every last one of us. You know what happened? We got right with God. We asked God. We started asking God to forgive. Notice what he talks about. Uh, Creating me. Uh, I acknowledge my transgression. Renew a right spirit within. Uh, cleanse me from my sin. Amen. And when that happened, y'all know what we, we got? We started worshiping God right. Amen. Yes, sir. That's what happens. That's what happens. It starts. Our Christian journey, it begins, we're getting right with God and we start worshiping. We start worshiping God with our heart, with our mind. And we start, remember, we are enraptured in the Lord's power, His passion, His, uh, His forgiveness, His pardon. Amen. Yes, sir. Let me tell you, we get our worship, uh, uh, each one of an individual, uh, they got their worship fit. They went from worrying, wandering, wavering, and they all started worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. Ain't that what happened to us? That's what happened. Amen. That's what's supposed to happen. We went from things to him. We went from possessions to him. We went from positions to him. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Worshiping. Worshiping. It's not sleeping. It's not complaining. It's not arguing. It's not enduring. Worshiping is enjoying the Lord. Amen. And you know why we worship? Because we enjoy the pardon we have in Jesus Christ. Amen. We have found a friend. Amen. Right? Our souls were satisfied. Amen. And we enjoy, let me tell you, say what you want to, you know what? Uh, we enjoy worshiping the Lord. Amen. Our worship got fixed. Yes, sir. Worship got fixed. Look, go to Psalm 95 real quick here. Psalm 95. Psalm 95. Look at verse 1. Psalm 95. Verse 1 says, come, Oh, come, let us sing in the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise. Watch this now. To the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. The Lord is great. Uh, uh, the Lord is a great God and a, a great king above all gods. In his, uh, in his hand are the deep places of the earth. Uh, the strength of the hills uh, is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and the, his hands form the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, uh, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the propagation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. We, we, know, we know that's in Hebrews chapter 7. Amen. Hebrews chapter 3. Right? But what I'm saying is right here, our Christian life, it began with worship. Amen. Amen. We went from a bunch, bunch of foolishness and a bunch of fakery. Amen. And from feelings. Amen. Amen. And falsehood to real, true, biblical worship. Amen. Amen. 
It had to be all charismatic and all this kind of stuff. It had to be all stoic. Amen. We could sing to the Lord and uh, and and have a heart full of joy because you know we know this is we know this time is real, real worship. Amen. That's where it started. Amen. That's why it's important. It's important to a Christian. All right. And so this worship it, and uh, uh, it involves our heart, our mind, our soul, our spirit. Amen. And then, see, real worship, and the reason why it's important is right here, because real worship, you know what it does? It affects your walk. Yeah. See, the Christian is not worshiping, you know what? Chances are he'll be stumbling. Right. Yeah. Amen. I ain't saying he's not saved. Amen. Chances are, though, he'll be stumbling. He's not worshiping. Amen. Again, how does a fish, how does a fish react when it's out of water? Yeah. When it's in water, let me tell you, when it's water, it's smooth. When it's water, it's, it got power. Yeah, amen. Let me tell you, I've been out there with Marcus, and we we hooked on to that. Uh, 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 what was that fish? Uh, I can't think of the name of it now. Uh, but it's not. A, you know, we don't want to eat it. But it was. It, man, that thing was fighting. It was. It was in the water. It was all we could do. I mean, that thing was wearing, wearing me out. My leg was shaking. My arm was shaking and sweating and everything. Man, that fish. I mean, but as soon as it got out of the water, guess what? It was over. It's out of its elements. No power. No way to maneuver. He was flopping on the side in the boat, but it wasn't going nowhere. Amen. That's what Christian life is like. Amen. Without that worshiping in that Christian life and enjoying the Lord, you say, but you want to, you know what? There, this flesh will wear you down. Amen. Without the worship. See, if it, were, it affects your walk. Come back to our text. Look here. Psalm 51. Look what he says. Psalm 51. Psalm 51, look at verse 10. It affects your walk. Look at this, look at these, look at these, these, these terms. Now watch this. He says, Psalm 51, verse 10, he says, Create in me, watch this now, look, watch this thing now. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right what? Spirit. Spirit. Watch it now. Spirit uh, 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 within me. Look at verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy what? Holy what? Spirit from me. Look at verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and hold me with thy what? Free spirit. My brother said, what you want to you know? Notice how this, all this thing is tied together. And my brother, that Bible says, walk in the what? Spirit and you will not fulfill the what? Lust of the flesh. Let me tell you something. This is why people walking in the flesh. You know what? Because they're not worshiping. And when you're not worshiping, you're susceptible to all this stuff. That the flesh is relentless. Y'all know that. Amen. And so God has given this thing called worship and walking. And that, that, that worship, you know what it does? No, it affects you. It, affects, uh, uh, it says, renew a right spirit. Restore unto me, right? Uh, 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 restore unto me the joy of thy, thy salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit and everything. No, and all these things have to, to, have to do with that which revitalizes you. Revitalize you in your Christian life, Amen. Now, y'all know we saved, Amen. We got the we got the earnest of the Spirit. Is that right? But we're uh, but we're also told this right here to walk in the fullness of the Spirit and yield ourselves to the Spirit of God, so that we'll do so. It affect our walk, Amen. But if we're not worshiping right, you say, but you want you know that's hard to do, Amen. Worship, Amen. walk. Galatians chapter 5, y'all know the verse, walk in the spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in wisdom, Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. Walk worthy, Colossians 1.10. Uh, uh, walk in him, Colossians 2. Amen. Uh, uh, Moses, Moses saw him invisible uh, when they was wandering in the wilderness, wayward, and what was he doing? He was still looking under Jesus. Amen. My brother, that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Let me tell you something. If you're not worshiping, chances are, you know what? You're stumbling and not walking. Amen. That Bible says walk in wisdom toward them or without, which are without. Amen. Amen. Y'all know Enoch. Y'all remember Enoch, right? This is a bad world. Everything's going wrong and everything. But it said Enoch did what? Walk with God. Let me tell you something. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Amen. Uh, Enoch wasn't walking with God while he wasn't worshiping God. Uh, to the contrary, he was walking with God because he was worshiping God. Amen. That's exactly what's supposed to happen to Christians. That's why I say it's important. Amen. It's important to worship God because it affects your walk. Just like a fish out of water. It affects your walk.
Amen? See, worship magnifies the Lord. Amen? We get to see the Lord. Amen? We get to see the Lord in a way that this world don't... Uh, so we get to enjoy the Lord in a way. You say, what you want to, you know what? Uh, that Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8, when he got that thing straightened out, when he got it straightened out, uh, and remember it says, when he baptized him, said Philip was called away, right? But he went on his way, it says, by the Ethiopian eunuch. Now, he went on his way, what? Rejoicing, amen. See, this whole world, if you can't tell me this right here, there ain't enough garbage going on that we hear about, we see, amen, that we're experiencing. And y'all, it, 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 just, just how with family, friends, and, and all the stuff going on, it's enough to just drag you down. You have got, let me tell you, you know the world's using, they're using pills, they're using liquor, they're using, they're using all kinds of stuff. Pump it up and everything. Y'all know what God has given us? This thing called worship, amen. amen. To revitalize our spirit. And when you come to church and you're not worshiping, you're missing out. Amen. Amen. Worship, it affects who we are, what we're supposed to be. That's where it got started. It affects our walk. Amen. It affects your work. Amen. Amen. You're not worshiping right. Amen. It's like sleep. You know, if you don't get the proper, I mean, you can function. You know, I'm going by this thing because he don't want to sleep. And so I said, sweetie, you got to sleep. You got to be more disciplined in study time. You got to get your sleep. I don't know about you. Let me tell you I can function. Can't you function without? I can. I, I, so plenty of time function on two or three hours sleep. Have you? Yeah. 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 The rigid like no. <laughs> but how do you function though? How you? How do you function? Are Are you at your butt best? No, you ain't at your best. No, you you be forgetting stuff, wondering what's going on, and people be talking to you. It sounds like somebody sound like Charlie Brown. Y'all remember Charlie Brown, the teacher talking to Charlie Brown? That's what it sounds like. You know, and somebody like, what's wrong with you? And they're like, why am I repeating things three? Because you're not grasping things, right? You're you're just running on fumes. But when you got plenty of sleep, I mean, you finishing sentences before. I knew you were gonna add. You know, I mean, you were on top of the game. Amen. So how do we think we're going to be that same as far as Christian without we're just getting, you know, bare minimum, little, little snippets here or there and everything else? No, that Bible says give us this day our what? Daily bread. That's a daily communion. Amen. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that uh, comes out of the mouth of the Lord. Amen. That's why I like sending them verses in the morning. Amen. So we have a little something, something. Amen. Amen. It affects your work, amen. Look what David says right here. Watch this. Look at what Psalm 51. Look what he says. Verse 13. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. And sinners shall be converted unto me. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God. Thou God of my salvation, my tongue. Watch this now. My tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O, 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 open thou my mouth. And my mouth shall show forth thy praises. Amen. You see what? It will affect your work. What you, how, now you go, it not only affects your work, but it affects your work. Amen. Work. It affects your work. Work will be carried out. Go to, uh, 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 go to Philippians chapter 2. And I want you to see this. Philippians chapter 2 in the New Testament. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. Philippians chapter 2. Don't get me wrong. This is not to get on. This is not me getting on to you. This is me uh, uh, encouraging all of us. Amen. Amen. You know, and you know why I'm so familiar with this? Because let me tell you, I'm flesh and blood. Just let me tell you, I'm just like you. Amen. I'm just, uh, uh, like, uh, like Peter said, we're men of right passion. Amen. I know what this right brother, I know. And he said, oh, but you're the preacher. It's this idea that, oh, the preacher, he always in constant fellowship. And I'm just kind of floating around everything, all this kind of stuff. Man, I found myself at the job. He going, man. <laughs> now I look around. They're like, pops, everything all right? Oh, yeah, that thing fell on the ground. Uh, I was, it fell on the ground. I was picking it up. <laughs> just like you. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about from personal experience. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, look at what it says, verse 13. Philippians 2, 13, it says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the uh, things of before, I press toward the mark for the high call of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many be perfect, be thus minded. If anything be otherwise minded, God shall reveal uh, even this unto you. But brethren, let me say, when your worship ain't right, 
Oh, I'm sorry, I read the wrong. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. I read verse Philippians 3.13. Uh, well, I meant Philippians 3.13. <laughs> and I read, and I told you Philippians 2.13. But what I'm getting at is, brethren, when you are in and when your when your worship ain't right, you know what? You're not trying to reach nothing. You know what you're doing? You're satisfied where you're at. Amen. Worship is it's a weird thing, amen. It it just inspires you, amen. amen. It inspires you. Real worship it inspires you to do better, amen. It does. It, it's like, man, I'm I'm charged now. Let's go. Let's go. Amen. Just and it's 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 a strange thing because you know what it's like I was uh, thinking about this and I said man we we spend so much time in this life I said different places I said politicians use words I said preachers use words jobs use words I said we just we just got words everywhere and everything and but words got power amen and I said if man understands his word has power amen then you know what surely the word of God's got power to a Christian amen, amen. worship it affects us. In our walk, the work, say what you want, you know, the work will be carried out. Amen. You know why? Because somebody's worshiping. Amen. It's different. It's different when you're worshiping and you're working. It's different. Look at this. Go to uh, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. It affects your walk. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, look at verse 6. It says, for, uh, for uh, Galatians 5. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything or uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by what? Love. Love. See, there's there's a there's a thing about this work, my brethren, that you know it battle boils down to, you know what? It's not how many people recognize what I did. It's not how many, it's, uh, uh, a recognition for what I did. It's I'm doing this out of a great endearment and love for Jesus Christ. Because I'm worshiping. Amen. I'm not worrying. I'm not wondering. I'm worshiping. And so when I'm in that state, you know what? Uh, it's our fellowship uh, uh, is better. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Paul and Silas, we read about this morning. Y'all know what they were doing? Paul and Silas? That wasn't a, we, and we see, we think the idea of worship time is, you know I me, mean, we got everything together. All, people got all this crazy stuff, you know I me, mean, got, got this going on, you got your little Bible stuff, you got all this, this, this like they said, like, uh, uh, I was reading this book about, all right, uh, preachers, uh, have a dedicated time every day to sit down and study, uh, have your desk in order, that have, make sure you have your thoughts in order, messy desk and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, but y'all crazy. Huh? Yeah, dri driving, cutting grass. <laughs> I said, I'll give my best messages, cutting grass. <laughs> really, I was like, because uh, grass is a monotonous thing, amen, but now my mind can wander on something else, amen. But I'm saying this right here, Paul and Silas, right? You know what they did? They wasn't worrying, they wasn't whining, and y'all know what they did that had an effect? They were worshiping, Amen. And that's what affected, and my brother, you said what you want to you, that's a real thing. I really believe when somebody sees you worshiping, I told you about the guy I called at the job. I see, still see him all the time. He just is smiling and everything else. I saw him upset one time the other day. I was like, man, man, I didn't even know you get upset. But he's the guy that cleans the restrooms. I told you, I, remember I preached a message when you get caught, and I called him. He was in there, and he was in the, he was in the break room, and he was just rejoicing and everything. I turned around and said, don't stop. <laughs> He said, he's worthy. I said, yes, he is. But I'm saying this right. That was, you understand, this guy was on the job doing all these things. But you know what? That, like I said, it's, 360, it's 365 days a year, amen. There's no, there's no such thing as break time and everything else. All that kind of stuff, amen. A fish lives out his life all, all the time in that water, amen. Why can't we Christians live our, our, our life, Christian life, in that arena of worship? Amen. It affects our walk, Amen. And it's supposed to be done in love. And like I said, Paul and Silas, you know what they were doing? They was worshiping. Amen? And in fact, their work. Uh, watch this. Go, if you will, to Malachi chapter 3. Malachi. Or the correct pronunciation, Malachi. <laughs> Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Watch this. Verse 16, Then they that fear the Lord 
Uh, and here's a, and watch here's the areas of worship. Uh, when you worship, you know you'll be thinking about the Lord. You'll be talking about the Lord. Amen. Now I was telling late this morning, uh, this afternoon. I said, you know, the Bible said. And I was thinking about preaching. The Bible says, "Commit thy way unto the work unto the Lord." And it says, "And thy thoughts shall be what established." But most of the time, you know, we want to do it the other way. Amen. Amen. So like we want to do it the other way. Because, uh, because, well, I don't know if this is right or anything. No, just stay. Just get busy worshiping God. And you know what? He'll straighten out that wall. Amen. Amen. Look what he says here. Then they that fear the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before, uh, uh, before him for them that feared the Lord. And that thought upon his... That, that's worship. Thought upon his name, and they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts, in that day that I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall he return, and watch this walk down. He said, discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Amen? And don't tell me the worship does not affect your service and your work that you do for Jesus Christ. Amen? Directly, it inspires you. Amen? It, uh, it, it uh, uh, exhorts you. Amen? Yes, it does. When you really worship the Lord. You know, and I go to, I'm, I have to close here. Go to Nehemiah chapter 8. Very familiar passage of scripture. Nehemiah. Nehemiah. I can find it. Where are we at here? Nehemiah. That's not it. Look at this new Bible. What's this? There we are. And Nehemiah, you know the story uh, as far as... Uh, Nehemiah is concerned. Nehemiah, they're uh, building the, the, the temple. Uh, they're doing the, 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 uh, the gates, this gate and that gate, the dung gate, uh, this gate and, uh, and that gate. And they start rebuilding the te temple. And uh, some of the people are crying when they, when they hear about all the, uh, the bad stuff that they've transgressed. Amen? They transgressed God's commandments. And they're all sad and, and uh, you know, just... just broken hearted that they've moved that far away from the Lord and uh, they don't, I'm having a mental block here, hold up Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, oh, there it is alright Nehemiah chapter 8 watch this, he says this he says uh, he says uh, verse uh, come back a little bit, he says uh Nehemiah chapter 8. And look around verse... Uh, well, we'll just begin just verse 1. He says, All the people gathered themselves together, one man into the street, as one man uh, that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the, the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning till midday uh, before the men and women and those that could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood. And that's where we get this from where pulpits come from. A pulpit of wood which had made for the, for the purpose. And beside him stood Mattathiah and Shema and Aniah and Urijah and Hilkiah and Messiah and on his right hand and on his left hand, Badiah, Padiah, Mishael, Micaiah, Hushim, Hash, Bad, Badana, Zechariah and Meshulam. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened, all the people stood up. That's where y'all were getting churches, and they want y'all to stand for the reading of the word of God. This is where they get this from. And he says, uh, And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen and Amen. That's where we get what you call responsive reading. Amen. You ever been to churches where they do this? All right, so he says, and lifted up their hands, and they bowed their heads, and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Do you see that? 
All right? So, now, and the reason I say that, you know why I'm reading all this? Because some people think this right here, that they didn't worship, they don't, that if they didn't jump all around. You understand? They ain't worship if somebody wasn't running around going, Woo! They didn't worship if, because uh, I'm not saying, that, my brother, uh, worship is emotional, but I'm not just saying just get emotional. Amen. You got people running around and, you know, they say, oh, y'all church is more like a Bible study. Just, um, studying the Bible, you say, well, it's supposed to cause you to worship God. Amen. Amen. Yep. And we need to study the Bible so we can worship God in spirit and truth. Because most of the time, when you start watching people, you realize their worship is all out. Let me tell you something. These charismatic churches, they, 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 they got all the emotionalism you want, but they are, they are woefully out of order. Yep. Amen. They got a lot of activity going on. Amen. Amen. A lot of spotting nanny, a lot of jumping around. But the women doing what they're doing, you can tell that is way out of order. Amen. Amen. And they worship, they know not what. Yep. Worship the Lord with their faces to the ground. And Yeshua and Benai and Shemaiah and Jamin and Echab and Bethsiah and Odiah and Messiah and uh, Kalita, as uh, as Azariah and Josabad and Hanan and Peliah and the Levites. This sound like now this is like public school reading the reading the uh, attendance uh, <laughs> list today. <laughs> Caused the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Amen. Amen. That's the preacher's job. Amen. You're supposed to understand it. Not change it. Not change it to suit them. Just so they can understand what it's saying. Why? Because when you understand, now you can worship God. Look at this verse 9. And Nehemiah, which is the uh, Torah Shartha, and Ezra the priest, the scribes and the Levites, that uh, uh, taught the people, said unto the people, This day is a holy unto the Lord uh, your God. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. And he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, send a portion unto them to whom uh, nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord, neither be ye sor uh, be sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your work. Strength. That's why the Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. And the reason why Christians are seemingly so anemic today, no power, no resistance, you know what? Because they come to church mechanically, methodically, but you know what? They're missing out on that which actually strengthens them. It's called real worship. Amen. My brother, don't let nothing, this, we got enough going on. Do not let this time, listen to that little time we get to spend together, brother, make it count. Amen. Amen. Make it count. Amen. Make it count. They got a little exercise saying they say if you just do something like 15 minutes a day. Amen. Just 15 minutes a day. Get your heart rate up and everything. That's better than nothing. Amen. But to come here and spend an hour and my brother not get nothing, you know, say what you want to, you know what? Uh, I know God wants you to have something. Amen. I know that. And so you know what? I I I really believe we ought to get all God has given out. Amen. Worship, worship, my brethren, worship the Lord. Amen. Worship. It's important to the livelihood of a Christian's life. Amen. Let's all stand for a word of prayer. We be dismissed. Brother Mike.